You have something special. You have greatness in you. I got a message for you. I want you to like this page and share it. Like it and share it. I'm excited to spend a few moments with you right now. Like it and share it. Because this is going to resonate with you. This, this message is for, for those of you that know in your heart of hearts that this is just not it for you. That life as it is now just doesn't work for you. And you want something better. You want something larger. And that's what drives me every day. People say, what motivates you? I, well, I'm still here and I'm grateful. <laughs> you know, I'm not taking a dirt nap. I'm grateful. And at 75, we were created to create, as James T. would say, out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And so I'm still creating. I'm fired up and excited about this thing called life. You forget your years and your years will forget you. So I want you to like this page and share it. Like it and share it. I, I want to share something with you. You are extraordinary. And you were chosen out of 400 million sperm to do some extraordinary stuff. You were not chosen to just be average, even though most people settle for being average. And there's a reckoning going on, not only for America, but for all of us. There's a quote that I love that said, many times in life, when we have a teeth rattling experience, we run to God only to discover that it's God that's doing the shaking. Come on now, come on. Yeah, this is a reckoning. The true character of America is coming out now. But our character has got to show up too. See, we are ordinary people who've been called upon to do extraordinary things. And this is a time as you look at yourself, look at your goals and look at your dreams. I was reading some statistics this morning how the, the, the suicide rate among teenagers is soaring. They're listening to our conversations. They're watching us. They're observing us. And ordinary people are stepping up, providing pizza and water and, and, and folding chairs for people standing in line to vote. This is a time all hands on deck that ordinary people are stepping up. Come on, somebody. Come on, listen to me, listen to me. This is your time to show up and shine. This is your time. All of us have the opportunity to participate in the process, to vote as if your life depends on it, because it does. And I wanna share with you right now, I did not do what I'm doing right now for 14 years. And I'm glad that I finally made the decision because now I will die a life of no regrets. For 14 years, I didn't believe in myself. For 14 years, we're told, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth unto those things which are before, we press toward the mark of the higher calling. Well. We might be through with our past, but our past is not through with us. And the impact of, of being called the dumb twin, the impact of being labeled educable, mentally retarded at Douglas Elementary School in Miami and put back from the fifth grade to the fourth grade, the impact of being called the dumb twin and failing in the eighth grade at Booker T. Washington High School, all of that stuff had some impact on me. There's some residue. We might be through with our past, but our past is not through with us. But this is a time, this is an opportunity, a reckoning, an awakening, that we get a chance to rethink our lives and we can look at our lives with new eyes because we have time to think. If we just set aside time to tune out the distractions and all the noise and all the craziness, this is no time to follow everybody else. Some people, there are three types of people in life. Those are people who make things happen, those are people that watch things happen, and those are people who don't know what happened. And the reason that you're listening to me 
It's like you and I are cut from the same call. You and I are, are branches of the same tree. The reason that you're listening to me is because you're the kind of person in your heart of hearts that you feel that you stand out. You feel that you are a person who make things happen. Yes, we, we're here to do extraordinary things, not to be average, not to buy into what everybody else is doing, not following the crowd, but living a life of significance, living a life that has energy, that has passion, that has power. Yes, and, and so when you look at yourself, look at, you're still here. God is not through with you yet. There is a greater work there's a greater work for you and me. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. There's a greater work and you know it. There's some things you just know. Can't explain it, but you know that this is not it, that there's more. It's gotta be more than what I'm looking at right now. You feel it in your heart. Some things you cannot even articulate Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. You were born to do extraordinary things. Remember that song, Ordinary People? God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. I remember I heard that song. I always loved that song. There's a sister out of Columbus, Ohio, named Harriet. She used to live there. She's in Texas now. She's a Ted at up. You're here to do extraordinary things. I want you to think about your goals and dreams. And I, I was fired up. I got up this morning. You know, the angels talk to me uh, between 3.30 and 4.30. I don't know why the angels don't come later on. But for some reason, they... They come between 3.30 and 4.30 to talk to me. And I said, okay, all right, I, I'm not complaining, y'all talk. I speak, Lord, thy servant heareth thee. And, and here's what I know about you. I can't see you, I don't know you, but here's what I know based upon my own experience. Here's what I know. You were chosen to do a greater work. Everybody don't listen to what I have to say. Some of you have been listening to me since you were little teeny weenies. <laughs> I gave a presentation at a corporation. All these guys are lined up with their computers that I came in and said, Mr. Brown, do you have your PowerPoint presentation? I said, I am the PowerPoint. <laughs> they all laughed. And I gave my presentation and I was about to leave. And the guy who was the chairman of the committee, he stood up. He said, can you come back, Mr. Brown? I said, yes. You have some more questions for me? He said, no. He said, you don't recognize me. When I saw you, I was in the airport with my mother. And she introduced me to you. And at the time, I was about eight years old. And and you kneeled down and talked to me and told me, come closer. I see greatness in your eyes. You had on a Mickey Mouse t-shirt. I'll never forget, I oh, love Mickey Mouse. And you had on a Mickey Mouse t-shirt and you told me, come closer, yeah. And you looked up at my mother and said, yes, it's here. I see it, mm-hmm, oh, you're gonna make your mother proud. Oh my goodness. Boy, he, he's got that thing, that it factor. I'll never forget that. Oh my goodness. You still do that to people in the airport? I say yes, but they have to help me get up with ideal. <laughs> that was over 37 years ago when he saw me and I saw him in the airport with his mother. Listen. You were born to do great stuff. And I, I want you to write this down. Write it the way I give it to you right now. I am chosen to do great works. You've been chosen. You, and, and here's the key. You got to sell yourself on that. 
I'm chosen to do great work. Why you have to sell yourself on it? Because it's easy to blend in. It's easy to follow the crowd.